I thought coming to Perth for the first time was going to be my highlight, but I swear to God, seeing these two boys in Backstreet Boys uh, microphones, <laughs> which absolutely takes the game. Uh, Backstreet's back, right? Yeah. Um, hey, it's really cool to be here. I was thinking about this on the way over. It's obviously a really big flight. We never anticipated we'd ever be in Perth. And it's so cool. Um, we kicked this thing off like four years ago just to share within a couple of guys. And, uh, and then we just stuck a banner on it called XY Advisor, literally because it was two letters away from sexy advisor. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, that joke all the time. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but for the amount of sharing that's going on, it just turned out that everyone was into it. And, um, and it's brought us all the way over here. And we're really happy to be sharing this. Um, we're in this room with you guys. Um, we've got three guys here. And we've got the Italian stallion, Steve. Uh, ready to MC the night. Um, food and drink will kick on for a little bit afterwards and then we'll go grab a beer for whoever's keen. But other than that, mate, Steve, take it away. Nice. Thank you so much. Thanks, Logan. Thank you, Logan. Thanks, guys. Um, welcome, everyone, to the XY Advisor live session tonight. Really, really excited for everyone uh, to be here and everyone who's um, made the effort to, to come along. Really going to have a great night. We've got uh, three great speakers uh, lined up for you tonight. Um, I've had a couple of uh, chats to Adrian in particular and a couple of a bit of inter uh, email interaction. So what we're going to share tonight, hopefully you're going to get a lot of value out of and uh, it's going to resonate really, really well with your financial planning businesses. So really cool. Also wanted to just quickly thank Nathan. So Nathan's in the room. Nathan's at the back there. Nathan from... IWF, um, really appreciate the support uh, on behalf of the XY Advisor crew, uh, who um, uh, um, Clayton was going to thank you, but forgot, so I'll just do it for you as well. Yeah. So, no worries at all. So, it's really, really cool. <coughs> Guys, um, yeah, and I love the fact that the XY Advisor crew actually kept their promise and made it all the way to Perth. It was a pipe dream, you know, probably six, eight months ago. It was something that was probably thrown out and bandied out around the place and uh, they've actually made it. So well done for you guys for putting on the event and also everyone for attending tonight. We're going to have a great time uh, and I hope you really, really enjoy it. Just a little bit of housekeeping. What we'll do, if it's okay with you guys, is um, we're going to look pretty deeply into um, uh, st strategic alliance partnerships, what I call strategic alliance partnerships, the, that sort of holy grail, the golden goose that everyone's trying to really master in their financial planning business. If I ask the question, let me just get a raise, uh, show of hands. Guys, who's really mastered the referral process? The alliance partnership, you know, got it going really, really well. You know, it's, you know referrals coming in left, right, centre, excellent quality. The, the, the quality, the quantity is fantastic. Who, just raise your hand really, really high. Who's, who's really smashing it right now? Raise your hand. Right, okay. It's this golden goose. Who's not doing it at well at all? Who's abysmal at it? Who's, who's shocking at it? Who wishes they, they never even heard the word referrals? Who, who's got that? Raise your hand. Who's somewhere in between? Somewhere in between. Right, okay. Most of us are in that sort of squishy middle. So hopefully tonight we're going to get some really good ideas, some strategies, and some things that you can implement immediately into your businesses to improve the quality of your referral processes. Uh, and build your strategic lines partnerships. Would that be valuable and helpful, guys? Just right, let me know. Yeah. Guys, because we're a bit quiet, I'm just going to ask the question again. Would that be helpful and valuable? Yes. 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 Great, guys, excellent work. All right, what we might Come do... On, guys, get out to Melbourne here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, all, all right, so what we're going to do, if it's okay, I might just... Um, intro so what we'll do, just a little bit of the format, I'm going to be asking a little bit of um, uh, questions to the panel. I'm going to throw to you guys for questions. So if you've got any questions along the way, you know, remember them, write them down, jot them down, take notes uh, tonight. Hopefully you're going to get heaps of value uh, from the speakers. So we will ask some questions and it's going to be more of an um, informal chat. So I don't want it to be an interrogation, it's more, more going to be a conversation. So that's how we'll sort of roll. We'll pause, catch our breath, and I'll give everyone an opportunity to ask any questions that you've got. We'll also be, we're also live on Facebook for everyone around Australia and also globally as well. We're, we are on Facebook, so uh, get out to everyone out there. If you guys have got a question or anything you want to ask, just find the chat box in there, ask yourself a, que uh, ask a question, and we'll make sure that we read those out a little bit later on as well. Cool? Sound like a plan? Yeah? yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is introduce our excellent speakers. Um, we've got three really, really uh, 
very experienced and very knowledgeable guys around, uh, well, more than just uh, alliance partnerships, but uh, I might just sort of do one at a time, and then I'll do one, and then I'll get you just to expand on it a little bit, if that's okay, and then we'll get to go to the next one, next one. So the first person we have, if I just grab the right sheet, uh, we've got Brent, um, Brent Fairhead from the Lawrence Group. So I haven't uh, written this bio, I'm going to do an uh, end version of it. So um, Brent is the Managing Director and Part Owner of the Lawrence Group and has been with the company since uh, 1989. Uh, although he's originally a country boy, he calls himself a perp boy now. Um, he's, he was a 40 under 40 award winner last year, was it? Yeah, last year, so that gives you a bit of an indication of what age he is. And he's an, he's an ins inspiring figurehead in the finance industry. He's the guy just, who's uh, got a birthday coming, yeah, coming up tomorrow. Um, yeah, so he's an inspiring figurehead, just so everyone knows. Um, uh, the Lawrence Group is made up of three divisions, and by leveraging these highly valuable in-house partnerships, Brent and his team have been able to create a platform for exponential growth, and also uh, their, their total financial solution uh, is an offering, has that offering to clients, and it's increased their business growth opportunities and launched them into the into game-changing territory within that business. So please, can you all welcome Brent and Fair? Thanks, Steve. Um, I started in '98 with the firm, not '89. '89, I was, as, as he said, I was 40. Uh, so <laughs> sorry. that's okay. That's okay. Sorry, but, that's okay. Well, if I had started when I was 12 and giving advice, yeah. it would be a bit of a worry. But um, yeah, look, now we, yeah, it's been a, it's been a good journey. Um, been with the first, it's really been my only job actually. We started uh, started with Lawrence when when I was uh, 20. 2021, you know, got interviewed at the footy club bar and with the, with the MD at the time, we had five staff and we sort of, yeah, we grew through acquisition and organic growth over over a period of time. Um, and when I started, we were just an accounting firm and, and uh, yeah, Joe sort of said to me, do you want to do financial planning? And I sort of said, yeah, what's that? Sounds good. So we sort of started from there and, yeah, did the five-day course to become authorised and qualified to give advice, which was a bit scary at the time. And, and luckily now they've, uh, you know, implemented a few more controls around that as to who can who can give advice. Um, but luckily, I had some good good mentors and trainers that I wasn't out doing things I shouldn't have been. So, uh, but yeah, we've since sort of grown the business substantially and um, and uh, done a management buyout, so we now own the business. And um, yeah, it's been good. But yeah, we're predominantly an accounting, financial planning, and, and finance broker business uh, located in Mount Pleasant. Um, yeah, and. Talk to you more as I get more questions. Find out a little bit more about the Lawrence Group shortly. So thanks a lot uh, there, mate. Um, next speaker, well, I'll go this way because it's... Uh, well, the next speaker is uh, Ray Jaramus uh, from Traster Wealth. So Ray's just quick bio. Um, uh, Ray is the Financial Life Manager and the 2016 IFA Newcomer of the Year Award at, uh, for Traster Wealth. Uh, he injects behavioural financial advice into his service offerings within uh, Traster. So we'll, we're going to find out a fair bit more about that tonight, hopefully. Um, Ray also works with the, uh, as a research affiliate with the University of Sydney in, the, in their business school, meshing his psychological and financial services world together. So putting those two things together, we'll find out about that. Um, Traster spent a lot of time executing and refining a number of accounting relationships where the team uh, have now nailed a joint, uh, the joint venture proposition with the county partners really, really well. Uh, he's a die-hard Tottenham supporter, so he can't help bad luck for that. Sorry, he was probably, probably born that way, so it's OK. <laughs> and um, when he's not in the financial trenches, he loves uh, all things uh, South American food in particular. So, uh, mate, Ray, if you could just give us a little bit of an expanded version on uh, Ray and the trust group. Yeah, sure. Thanks, thanks so much. And um, we're all kind of privileged to be here, I think. Uh, you know, out of the, the co-founders, three out of four of us started at uh, AMP Horizons. Uh, and one of the things that we really enjoyed in that environment was the opportunity to kind of get together after or outside of the office hours, really, and talk to each other about what we were doing and kind of breaking out of our silos. And um, through that kind of embryonic uh, ideology came, you know, what we're doing tonight. So it's, it's a real privilege. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's... it's been fun so far, yeah. And uh, I only know a little bit about your model, but what I've heard is very different and uh, very out there and forward thinking, so really uh, interested to know a little, a little bit more about that tonight. So thanks a lot, uh, Ray. Finally, on the end here, uh, uh, last but not least, we've got uh, Adrian Paddy, and Adrian Paddy's the CEO uh, and founder of Spark Partners. Um, he's also the, uh, the principal financial advisor at AP uh, Financial Solutions. 
as I said, he's a co-founder of Spark Partners, and uh, uh, they founded that in 2017 to bridge the worlds of accounting and personal financial advice, which I think is really, really logical and the obvious next step. Um, he's a mad tech head, and if anyone follows him on, online and on uh, in the XY Advisor group, you'll, you'll probably will be able to attest to that. And he loves to push the new frontiers by challenging the status quo and adopting new technologies. Um, when he's not trying to automate anything, uh, using Zapier, I think is your automation <laughs> and uh, uh, linking tool. Um, when not trying to automate everything, uh, he loves to sit uh, with a beer by the beach. That's M's words, not mine. So, so mate, uh, yeah, if you could just uh, expand again and give us a little bit more of a note. Oh, sorry, but <laughs> Having a couple of technical difficulties here. I don't like handing over the mic. It's all right, I'll give it back, Steve. It's all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, as Ray said, it's awesome to be here. We talked about being in Perth for a while. Uh, as Steve said, I've been an advisor for a few years, um, along with Ray, similar timeline. And we've all just branched out into doing stuff that we thought was pretty cool. And uh, recently, or as of last year, we, I've uh, started a new gig where we're focusing on uh, accounting firms. Uh, and it's also evolved into, uh, I guess, other channels that uh, work around financial services. So I guess um, for tonight, I'm looking forward to not just talking about the accounting firm relationships, but also broader relationships in the financial services that are applicable to our clients. So uh, yeah, looking forward to fielding questions around that and yeah, trying to give some value to everyone. Great work. Awesome. Thanks for that. So guys, just give the guys a quick round of applause. Just to thank you for being here. Well, so, I reckon, um, so why are we here? I reckon there's three big things happening in uh, financial planning, in the financial planning space around referrals. And you know, effectively, and just think about your business and how it resonates with you as I, as I walk through this. I reckon, number one, your referrals, especially from your alliance partners. So when we talk about alliance partners, it's accounting firms, but it's also mortgage brokers and settlement agents and stock brokers and law firms and estate planning and all the rest of it. So you know, we'll probably talk a lot about accountants and mortgage brokers, but it can be anyone, basically. I reckon, number one, uh, referrals are ad hoc and sporadic. Who would agree with that? Your, your referral process, your referrals are ad hoc and sporadic in your business. Would we agree? You guys agree with that as well, in the fashion? So, so that's number one. Number two, a lot of the time, the referrals that you are getting, they're poor quality. Who, who's also faced a little bit of that as well? Who's got poor quality every now and then? That's right. So, so they're ad hoc, hoc, hoc and sporadic. They're poor quality, but not only that, there's often a lack of system and process within your referral process. And again, guys, just to show hands, who would, who would have that? Who's got a, who would suggest that there's a lack of system and process with your referrals? Would you sort of all agree with that? Okay, cool. So, well, so I reckon that's, that's sort of the reason, the big reason, and there's lots of other reasons, but that's really why we're here tonight, to try and over, get an overview of what is working, what systems and processes are working, and, what's, and what hasn't worked in your businesses, to, so we can share that. So guys, the question I've got for you, why do you, why do you believe that referrals are so important for the financial planning division and your accounting relationships in particular uh, for you. So why do you reckon referrals are important? So we can, we can just do a bit of an overview. So I might, might start with Brett. Um, I think, uh, well in our business, because we're an integrated, or trying to be more integrated, accounting financial services, um, the, the referrals are important because we want, we want clients to have multiple touch points. We want clients to get quality advice. We're, we're a big believer in not wearing too many hats. You know, we, we we, we don't have any accountants who are financial advisors. We don't have any financial advisors who are accountants. We don't have any finance brokers who are planners. And we really want to have a specialist model. So the idea is that you know that you, you specialise in, in one area and you, you provide really good advice to that client, but they're always going to need you know a, a financial advice, good financial advice. And and the idea is that you know if they can if they can get that quality advice. Um, so the referrals are important because we our, our business model is providing. You know, holistic solution to clients and being able to you know, become, they, clients become more sticky, so it's good for business, but it also is better for the clients because they're getting everything under the one roof, it's convenient for them. Um, you know, and I think you know, there's obviously a shortage of people, there's a, there's a shortage of, um, well not shortage, but there's a lack of people who are actively getting financial advice in our, in our country. It's becoming more and more complex with the rule changes and everything, and it, it's, yeah, it's just we want to be able to try and offer that. Um, and our clients to get ahead because we just see so many people make bad decisions and, and then sometimes it's too late or it's, you know, it could have been fixed a lot earlier. Or needed to be done. Yeah. yeah, so it's really about educating our accountants on what the value of advice is and it's not, it's moving past the, the product and it, it's in, into the strategy sphere and trying to explain how we can make a difference. Yeah. Right. 
So uh, that's sort of the internal. You've got the accounting firm and the financial planning firm in house, right? Just I'd love to hear your angle on on that as well. But why do you think uh, referrals are so important, and how is that working in, in your relationship? Well, I think often with clients, once they start working with a professional, what they're after is you know that that trusted advisor. Yep. So once once you've established that, I think it's really important that, and without wearing too many hats, that you then kind of have the obligation to share with the client those that are really good at debt structuring or accounting or law. Um, you know, all too often I've, I've sat down with newer clients that have had, um, and, you know, without being an accountant, seeing, you know, un, untidy accounting and there's just so much opportunity lost. Whereas, you know, I think, you know, if you, if you own that relationship and you're going to be honest about that, um, you know, it's kind of your obligation. I mean, yeah. And then there's obviously the, the business case as well. So, sure. um, you know, the stickiness and those sorts of things, which just come as a result of, you know, really helping that. So, guys, how often do you see a client walk in who hasn't had financial pl uh, planning advice, and they and that, but they do work with an accountant. They've got all these unmet needs that w that they've never spoken to anyone about, but they've had this need all the time. And thank God, nothing happened to them from a risk point of view. So, uncovering those areas and making sure that those things are covered up, I think, is pretty important as well. Totally. Adrian's a different, little bit different model again, more of a corporatised model for you. So, if I can, I so can I just give you, get you uh, sort of answer that same question? So, why do you think in your situation that uh, the referrals are so important? Well, it's pretty simple. Like you got a client that hasn't been referred, and you got a client that just you you proactively brought in. Um, we've all had those sort of experiences. You generally the ease of the flow of the financial advice process that occurs. It's always easier when someone's been referred to because the threshold for trust with financial advice is so high yeah. that it's just easier to do your job if you've got someone referred to. They've done that trust building process for you. They've vested some of their trust in you yes. into the client. So their journey with you is just easier. They're not wondering if they've made the right decision or not. They're just, they're working with you and you're working with them and you're not dealing with as many friction points as you would otherwise deal with when you're dealing with a client that has been referred. Yeah, so it's, so it's like that trusted confidant situation where, especially with accountants, accountants have already built up that trusted confidant uh, position. So we want to, like you, like you said, you, you want that trust being anointed or, or to be anointed or vested over to the financial planner as well. And, uh, you know, financial planning clients who have been referred, they, they tend to convert easier and they also stick longer as well because you had that, uh, that referral relationship as well. So really, really good guys. Um, Different approaches, um, and that's why we've actually chosen these three guys, because they're all very, very different. Um, I'd just like to know, sort of, the, from the approach point of view, how you actually structure your referral relationships, you know, how you position it, how you talk about it, and, and things like that. So, again, I'm going to go through all three, again, because they're very, very different models. And, again, what I want you to try and do is just re uh, listen to what the guys say and put that into your own situation and say, hey, maybe I could do that, or that's something I could do, or a way that we could do it as well. So... Brent, if I can start with you, so the question is really, just if you can give us an overview of your approach and the methodology behind the referral process. Yeah, um, we sort of built it into the culture. I mean, because we started as such a small firm and I ran the planning division, um, you know, when we brought new, new accountants on, we educated them. And a lot of it is education. I think we run uh, training sessions with, with, our, with our referrers, so our accountants, even though they're, they're in the same firm and they know what we do, you know, there's always new, new changes in legislation, there's new strategies that might come up. And, and when we've done a really you know, good, good uh, particular strategy for a client that we think is going to be a good case study, we will then you know, try and add that to our regular training to the, to the, uh, to the accountants. Because traditionally accountants are very scared to refer, they're, they're very much protective of their client relationships. And, you know, and, and a few things, you can really burn the refer. well they might have been burned before, um, due to referring a client to someone and being let down by the service that was given. So, uh, and that's happened in our business as well. We've recruited financial advisors who have let down, you know, the, the accountant and, and um, probably more on the finance broking side. We've had some brokers that we've worked on who have really torched the relationship and the clients, some clients have left the business. So the accountants then lost their client because the, the referrer, the, you know, the person that referred, um, the referee, uh, has, has let them down. So. I guess ours is all amongst providing, building that confidence um, and educating them on what things to look for and combining that with maybe some examples of how we've, uh, how we've helped clients in the past and the difference we've made. Um, so for example, 
We'll probably do an insurance uh, training session coming up in the next month or two. Today, unfortunately, and fortunately for one of my clients, uh, I got, uh, you know, uh, the accountant got a phone call. Um, her husband had a heart attack. I'd seen him a number of years ago, had been trying to do a review. He hasn't really been, he's that busy, he hasn't been responsive, but he kept paying his premium and, you know, he's got this huge trauma policy, you know. So I've left a message for, uh, you know, so, as much as it's it's unfortunate, he's alive, he's kicking, he's got a trauma policy, and um, that'll be part of the you know, things that we added to our case studies with, with the accountants, just so that we can show them the need. You know, and it will be a lot about the debt that he's got and how we've been able to clear it and the, you know, the response that his wife had when we told her, because I haven't spoken to her yet, she's probably tried to ring me back. I mean, it's, it's, it's why you give advice. I mean, you don't, you don't wish claims on anyone, but to see, you know, to see that sort of happen and, um, and experience that, they're the types of good stories that you can tell. So, again, you've got to have those stories, but I think, I think the main thing is building the confidence and explaining that we're not just, we're not flogging product here, we're, we're helping build assets, build, help achieve goals, but also protecting it. You know, we do a lot of estate planning as well. It's not all about mm -hmm. risk, you know, insurance. It's, it's about the whole box and dice. And you might not get paid a lot to help them sort their will out and put us enduring powers of attorney in place, but if you, if you're ticking all those boxes and you're, mm -hmm. you're tidying up the client's affairs, there's that element of trust that you build that they'll just keep coming back to you and, and they'll refer others. You know? I think the important thing for the accountants or the, the um, partnerships to understand is that we're actually changing people's lives. And, and you know, not only do the public need to know that, but our strategic alliance partners need to know that we are actually changing lives each, each and every day. So I think it's really cool. Okay, awesome, mate. Thank you so much. What about you, Ray, from, from your point of view, with your outsource? But same, sort of, same question. I'd just love to know, know the approach of sort of how you work with them, what you, how you position it, you know, sort of, and how you, how you get the buy-in from, from your alliance partner. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's accounting it. heavy, so yep. it's been exciting night. night. Yeah. Um, look, frankly, it was as a result of the changes in the legislation for accountants. They were obviously providing proxy financial advice and kind of had a license to do so, um, which, which was no longer the case. So we kind of saw that as an opportunity to talk to accountants. And the, the average age of an accountant isn't too different to the average age of a, a planner. It's quite, quite a bit older. Uh, but one of the interesting things is when you look at an accounting business, the multiple that that business has uh, is actually quite a bit lower to, to financial services. So an accounting multiple is generally times one of annual revenue. Um, but for financial planning, I mean, kind of, it's Pandora's box, right? The times one's pretty good. The times one's pretty good. Right. The times one's pretty good. So, so it's sold out, eh? <laughs> um, but you know, you can see there's this compelling opportunity there. So the the how the, the approach is basically, um, you know, frankly, we build an entity, a joint venture entity that sits between the planning business and the accounting business. You own that 50-50, and the accountant has buy-in because suddenly they're able to then transfer their clients into that joint venture CRM, which is just the same as the financial planning CRM, but it has a different shell on it. Um, and then from the revenue that's generated, earn that, that multiple, which is basically building an asset, which not only uh, has, a, has a value at the end of it should they ever retire, but if they choose to retire and not sell the asset, they're, they're earning recurring revenue. So you're, sol you're solving the licensing issue, you're solving the, the succession planning issue and, and the, the income issue as well. Wow. Um, and you know, it's at the same time where the client's getting that trusted advisor solution. And you know, frankly, I think we just took the opportunity of the time and, and kind of recognize that there was, there was that. Guys, how cool is the model? You think about that. Look, you think about all of the boxes that Ray's just ticked off there, you know, in building a really good strategic alliance partnership, but also helping a whole heap more clients as well with their financial planning and their accounting side as well. So I love, I love that model. It's really, really cool. It's a great work. Thank you. Adrian, again, a different uh, sort of model where you're, you were telling me earlier that you're um, actually building relationships with accounting firms and placing an advisor inside that firm, it, so just, if you can expand on that a little bit for us. Yeah, yeah, we've um, oh, we've thought a lot about the different ways that it can be done, and uh, Ray's, what Ray's just talked about is one of the key models, that joint venture aspect, and there's a number of factors with the uplift, uplift in value of the client or the business, um, uplift in revenue as well. Like, you gotta remember that accountants are under, under strain in terms of, they've got a lot of challenges coming through the business, um, some of the businesses are dealing with it well, others aren't. And um, so there's a lot of, lot of businesses out there that actually could do with the support where they've got this pool of um, 
clients that they've got great relationships with, they just not may not have the best business model that's mm. applied to it, and they haven't been able to adjust their business model. And you're coming in, or like the conversations we're having is um, that yeah, this is this is an opportunity to extract more value by adding value to your clients. So uh, there's there's always the retention piece. There's the uplifting of value. Um, the other the other bit is also just like a lot of these accounts are getting clients asked these questions, yes. but they just don't have the destination to send them to. And they're constantly, they're in a flux because every every advisor knows that when someone asks you, and it's the same for us, when we get asked for another professional, we don't have someone that we already are sure to send to. It's sort of that in-between place. We don't want to say we don't have one, sort of left in a bit of a, a vortex sometimes. And also the other thing is that, like often, if you leave the client to their own devices, they may end up with someone that you don't want them to be dealing with. So account will lose the client as well. Yeah, so the psychology that we deal with, with in that space is the same as what they deal with. So it's yeah, it's that sort of and, and just so just furthering on that, you know, the opportunity is quite large, and again on accountants, because an awesome financial planning client does not look like necessarily an awesome accounting client. A lot of times accountants will have these books of uh, tax return clients which they've you know, frankly, in, in a couple of cases that I've worked with, they've, they've written off four or five hundred people because it's transactional mm. and it's kind of rolling over the super in our world. And, you know, they don't, they don't sort of see what they, they're not SMEs, it's their complexity, and like, I don't know what to do. And like, oh, mate, <laughs> you know, this is this is this is fantastic. It's a job one, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're doing different things. You know, one of our one of our income individual tax return clients one twenty five mil for the lottery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. It's our biggest FB client now. Yeah, from an I return. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're right. All the accounts want to get rid of I returns. They they want business clients. Yeah, small to medium businesses. I mean, you know, they're not great FB clients. They they're good. They're good for structural strategy type work. You SMSF. You know, we transfer property, commercial property in and stuff, but. You know, the I returns are, you know, the accountants all talk about how, you know, they want to you know, get rid of them, they're not valuable. I said, yeah, but they're the most valuable for FP. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of the, either business owners who are retiring, selling their business, um, young business owners trying to grow their business, you know, they, they're valuable. Um, some established business owners just think they, well, they're fairly sophisticated, they, they do think they know a fair bit. They like to manage their own self-managed fund and pick their own investments, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a whole heap of I returns out there. That, um, it, every single human, pretty much in Australia, has a super fund. They need some life insurance. They have a debt. They have cash flow. They pay tax. They need a will. All of the things that we do. So there's all this uncovered opportunity inside that accounting book that is just waiting for someone like one of us to actually ask the question and and uncover that opportunity. Because if we don't, what happens is the client. Walks out the door. I used to, the analogy I used to use: the client's just waving. We just wave goodbye to the client out the door. They're just walking out the door. Number one, there's dollar signs walking out the door. But number two, there's unmet need from that client's point of view walking out the door as well. So I think it's ours and the alliance partners' kind of fiduciary duty to make sure they ask these questions as well. Yeah, it's all about trust. I mean, it's all, all about the building a relationship with the account so they trust you to, to, to trust referring their clients to you. Otherwise, your client will just go to the bank. You know, the other they've got a relationship with their accountant and the banker. You know, it's the bank who they're very good at cross selling. They're very good at referring. Yes. You know, they I mean, hopefully it doubled down a bit because they're not, you know, um, becoming as vertically integrated, and they're not. Uh, you know, the the amount of um, you know the amount of internal credits and and bonuses that were linked to them cross referring in the past is hopefully getting you know going to get uh, getting wiped out a bit more. They're all coming off. You know, bonuses that are linked to product and you know, the Royal Commission is going to hopefully sort a lot of that out. You can see they're all selling their insurance book businesses to, to other dedicated... So hopefully it's becoming less and less, but you know, the banks have... Some of the bank advisors have you know, torched a lot of client relationships. Yeah. And, you know, so it's the idea of... You know, now, I don't know how many bank planners we've got here, but <laughs> I, 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 know that, I, know that in, I know that there's change. And, and, and hopefully now you... Because it hasn't been the bank planners' fault so much, because they've had an approved product list that they've had to sell, you know, their own bank products. And the best thing for the industry is for, you know, people complain about laugh. Well, you know, it's it's the way it should be. I mean, it should always have been consistent commission uh, rates. Should be all the products should now get aligned and be a bit more similar too. You know, it should be open APLs. Product manufacturers shouldn't own, shouldn't be 
distributing product. You know, so hopefully we're going to see a real evolution of the business of the industry that's going to be in the best interest for the client. You know, unfortunately, us who have done the right thing all the way through, we get dragged through the ring with all the paperwork, and it's you know if we can automate that more, obviously it's going to be better. Um, but yeah. Cool. Sorry, um, brand there. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we love, we love, love that. And we love a good Facebook brand, so fantastic. <laughs> Guys, um, mate, Brent, I'm just going to come back to you for a second. Can I ask how many accountants, how many alliances, oh, so accountants in other words, in the firm? Uh, it's about 25. About only 25. Okay, right. And of that 25, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption that there's some that are, are really good referrers and some aren't so good referrers. So could I just um, touch on maybe what are some of the characteristics you find that the good referrers and the people who are involved and engaged, what are some of the characteristics that you show that you notice? And what are the, maybe therefore, some of the characteristics that the other ones uh, lack and we might need to train them up on or educate them on a little bit? Yeah, um, I think the longer termers, so uh, the ones I've built relationships with really yep. over a longer period of time. So just more confidence. Guys, any, anyone taking notes, please write that down. Are these it's all in internal? House. In house. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess the, probably the um, because not maybe a lot of people in the in, in the audience haven't got an integrated internal accounting financial planning business. I mean, it comes from management culture and that. But if I give you an example of a few firms we've acquired, so we've acquired firms over the years that haven't been great at it. You know, that haven't had financial planning. So um, I guess what we've done with those those accountants who are brand new, hadn't met us, you know haven't never referred in the past, that, that's about building a relationship. So, you know, obviously we had opportunities in a social aspect, you know, or I just go and sit down with them and, you know, have a chat to them. I mean, one, you just get to know them. It's all about trust. It's, it's not a, it's no magic formula. Uh, some people, some accounts that don't refer, they just, you can build a relationship with, you, with them all you want, but it's about trying to educate them on, as, again, you, you've done a good job. Uh, with this client, if there's any other clients that you think might be able to benefit from that, let us know. Yeah. No pressure. But it, I think I found over those first firms with acquisitions, once you once they've referred one client and you've done that job for them, then all of a sudden they're happy, you know, and they, they start referring. But sometimes it took six to twelve months build a relationship yeah. with them, you know, and and uh, they get to know you because yeah. it's about getting to know you before they refer you. It's like a client. Clients, so you build rapport with them. You know, they eventually trust you, and the, the longer term clients just come in, and they're the easiest to deal with because they trust you. So, do you have external referral relationships? Um, we have had. Uh, the issue is though that they refer account accounting firms referring accounting clients to our, us. We're, we're an accounting firm. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult. There's a conflict there, and um, look, we, we yeah, we've had one particular relationship that worked reasonably well. Uh, we brought the planner in, he'd already had a relationship with them. We gave, I met with the owners and said, mate, we're not going to poach your clients. Keep referring to, to, to our planner and, you know, you'll keep doing a good job. And, you know, we sort of segregated them on the databases. No, they don't get our accounting newsletter. And, yeah, so it's about managing that, you know, properly. But, um, yeah, so uh, I think it's about educating them. Like, when you ask, some prefer, some don't. Yes. Well, that's sometimes in the persona, but there's some that sit on the fence. Who I think with a bit of education and relationship building, you can get them get them to refer a bit more. I'm glad when I asked the question, you said there was 25 and not two, because that would have been quite a kind of weird question, but anyway, that's good. But um, I think the, the key point is, guys, it's about the relationship, and even when it's not, not just has, doesn't just have to be the internal, even with external, what you want to be trying to do, you don't want to be going in and trying to build referral partnership, you want to be, get, you want to be out there making business friends. Yeah. Business friends, but you think about it, if you look at the top f uh, 10 to 15% of the best financial planners out there. You think of someone in your head right now that you know, the top end echelon guys, one of the characteristics, because there's a few, but one of the traits they have, they've got a, a one or several really good, strong relationships with a strategic alliance partner, and they're actually more than just business relationships. What you find is they, they go to the football, they go out together, they go, they go to wherever they go, they go out, there's more than just that business relationship. So you want to, I reckon, one of the big things is to build more than just a relationship and actually build, make yourself a business friend. And it's amazing what happens when, again, when you look at that top echelon. So offer them a free financial plan. Offer them a free financial plan. Uh, wine and alcohol, wine, uh, sorry, food and alcohol works really well <laughs> as, a, as a business building tool for sure. So, cool, all right, so, um, so I just wanted to ask uh, you, Ray, um, 
talk, talking about when you're trying to, I'll use the word pinpoint, yeah. who you may look, go out and try and build a strategic alliance partner with. So I'm really interested in what are some of the things that you look for when you go out to build these relationships. Now, I don't know how many more you're building now because I know you've got a few, but maybe yeah. you can go back a bit. Yeah. What, what was the positioning or what was the thought process of saying, hey, that might be a good person to talk to or that might be a good opportunity for me? Yeah, what were you thinking when you were um, building these relationships and choosing who to work with? Yeah, sure. So with our business, it was frankly luck. So the, the, the business owners met, met each other on a, on a ski field um, for, for one of them. The other one was, was at a conference. So, um, you know, people who are accountants, uh, who are business owners who are in interesting sessions, are obviously there to learn something new. They've, they've got a, a problem in their business and they're, they're quite keen on, um, on, on looking at. Can I just ask, has, has anyone got, an, got a friend who's an accountant? Just raise your hand. Who knows someone who's an accountant? Everyone pretty much in the room, right? Has anyone met an accountant at a conference? Just raise your hand. If you've ever, anyone ever met a, an accountant before? So these are just things that happen day to day, guys, and they're like opportunities that are yeah. that are walking. They're, they're right there in front of us, but we often don't see it. So again, I'm just trying. To, I want you to be aware when you meet someone in this situation or you know someone, start to have these conversations with them because luck is half the thing. Well, I think I think you know once once we realise that the model works and is attractive for accountants, we actually had a little bit of confidence. So you know it was talking to our clients. You know, do you like working with your accountant? Are they like us? Mm. Grabbing a coffee with them. Go to the footy, whatever it is, and you know if they look like me in a different industry, you know if it's quite like if it makes sense, you know the you, the, the job's done. You've got that you've got kind of that, that client who uh, is mutual, so you're not you're not coming in cold, and you know there's that kind of mutual not respect, but at least familiarity. Yeah. Um, and you know, like I said, the, the model works. We we had these conversations with confidence. So you've got a good value proposition to go and talk to them about, and you've so you've got the confidence to follow a good framework there. Yeah, but I think you know, having having the client, having a, a mutual client, is that permission to to jump on the phone and say, hey, Steve, we've got a mutual client, I'd love to grab a coffee. Yes, yeah, love to run something past you or whatever. whatever. Yeah, it's so simple and easy, and all you've got to do, then you've got the opportunity now to now to sit and have a coffee with them and, and go from there. So really cool. Okay, so again, it's not doesn't sound like there was a whole heap of rocket science behind this. No. The reality is there's not. Once your mind is open up to these new ideas, it's kind of what you think shall become. And the more you think about this, the opportunities will start to appear in front of you and you'll know, okay, right, here's an opportunity I can go and I can, uh, I can start talking about that or mention that. So, so really cool. Um, again, Adrian, I, I kind of want to run with that same question with you because, again, with your different model of, um, of building those formal relationships and placing people in-house, in you're obviously on the lookout and trying to build your network of, of accountants that you work with as well. So the first thing I want to know is how are you actually building the network of people that you that you interact with? And again, probably secondly, how are you, because you can have a big network of people, but not all of them might be a right fit for you. Mm -hmm. So how are you building the network? And then secondly, how are you pinpointing the people that might be a fit for you and your model? Good question. Cool. The, uh, a lot of the connections we've made, have, like we started, like for example, there's an accounting business expo that just had the most recent one. And uh, we went to the one last year, and that was just at the start of when we were edging into it. And we, we still relatively had no idea about what was going on in accountants' minds, really, what their problems were in the business. And so we just went down there and just started cruising around and talking to people. And we made a couple of connections. Um, you go out for drinks later on, you start talking to people. And it's, it's, I'd like to say something besides time, but it is, it's a bit of time and persistence. Like you've got to put yourself in proximity to have a conversation. It's just like, um, it's like when you think about potentially picking up new clients in different destinations. They've got to actually see you, you've got to be there, you've got to have a conversation. So we just, we've gone out to just whatever channels we could. There's a number of things you think like self-made super fund businesses um, that bridge advice and accounting. Um, technology businesses as well are really good. So talking to the, the BDMs for those businesses who talk to advisors and accountants, and they've been fantastic. Like They've been really good at, um, I guess, understanding where we're coming from, because they get advice and they get accounting, and they have great accounting relationships. So if you make, if they almost become a bit of an intermediary for what you want to achieve, because they, they understand both and they know good people in both areas and they, they're BDMs, they're referred, they connect people. So 
And that's been really effective for us, and that's probably been one of the biggest. Um, the other thing is just, I guess, technology. Like, when you talk about the firms, that's, it's, like, I know we talk about, like, the pain points that accountants are dealing with, but the, the hard thing is it actually not um, just falling for that because there's a lot of businesses that are in pain but it doesn't mean they're the best partner for you. Yes. So, and this has been the one where we've sort of been, because we've been going slowly, slowly throughout the last year, it's sort of, okay, well, it's tempting, they're keen, they want to do something, but do they meet these other requirements? It's just like a financial planning client. client. Yeah, so like, and, and what that actually, when you think about that, it's, it's, it's really what, Steve goes on about a lot. It's like when you're niching for a financial planning client because just wanting to have an accounting relationship isn't enough. You, you have, if you don't think about what type of accountant or what type of business you want, that's when you're not going to quite connect because you're not clear on exactly what, or you're not going to get what you want. So we, we've thought so much about it, like, and it's, it's pretty much gravitated towards anyone that's actually got a good accounting business that sort of might like either um, working in advisory, so really gets, they've got a reasonable accounting business model and they're not really, uh, they're not under the, they're not the guys under the pump from the ATO deadlines. Mm. That's what our experience has been. These are the guys that have time to think about the business as a business owner. And as that an have entrepreneur, time, entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, have, have conversations with us. That's, that's been our experience. And they're good, good conversations. They're, these guys get, you, like what Ray's talked about with the joint pension models, they get the different valuations. These guys are giving advice to businesses. Yeah, they get it. Um, they get the demand from their clients around the self-managed super funds, but they also get um, that there's a, they don't understand a lot, and they're very much into, they, because they've niched in their business about what they do, they understand about this, and they're not as protective. They just know that their clients need to see someone. Can, can I ask you, mate, um, uh, uh, one of the barriers to financial planners building relationships with these alliance partners is uh, I know who I want to target and I know a little bit about their business, but I, if, I, if I get a meeting with them, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask them or how to, how to uh, you know, find out a bit more about them, what their needs are and all the rest of it. Do you have a sort of set of you know, questions that you ask to, to sort of dig deeper and find out a little bit more about them and uncover whether they're going to be a fit for your business or not? Is there certain things that you talk about? Yeah, we've, sort of, we've identified a few key areas and it's sort of, um, we, we will make it clear what the requirements are in terms of numbers of referrals. So not just like we want you to refer, it's like this is, we've actually mapped out the business planning and the business model that we've mapped out in terms of these joint ventures um, is really clear on how many clients are required to come from that destination to make it work. So you've got something tangible to show? Yeah, it's right. all the numbers are laid out. Yeah. It's the costs of running the business. Um, another thing we did, we did like just in terms of their other options, in terms of what they could be doing besides partnering with an advice practice. You've got the self licensing, you've got um, limited licensing, and we did a modelling. We looked at the cost to actually. So you got you got a professional has all their training, their CPD requirements as that profession, and they're edging into this space. And you, we all know what we need to do. We know what our requirements are. We know and. We're already trained to the extent where we don't have to do that base level. We're talking base level, we're talking learning. The biggest thing is actually learning about the process. They, they underestimate. This is accountants now looking at financial planning. Yeah. Or doing it themselves. Yeah, yeah. They, they underestimate what actually goes into it. Mm. And they get in down the process and they think, holy cow, what have I got myself into? Yeah, yeah so there's some businesses that have worked, they've got the scope model working quite well. Um, it's just really scoped. And, and for those businesses, they're just, they just need to understand what they're leaving on the table, but at least they're good to talk to because they understand what's required. So any business, like the best conversations we've had are with businesses that either tried financial planning or are, are operating one, because they understand all the pain that we deal with inside our businesses. Guys, so. just in the room, who, who's got a relationship with an accountant or knows an accountant who's got one of those limited licenses at the moment? Who's got, who's got one? Just a whole heap of hands up in the room. So again, there's a really good opportunity. They've, they've felt the need that they, they thought they could do it. Oftentimes they thought they could do it. It's harder than they thought and they're now looking for a way out. Now they don't want to get out, but maybe they want, might want an answer to come and help them out and take that responsibility off them so they can get back to the core of what they're meant to be doing. So I think a lot of, them, a lot of those uh, guys now, they're stuck and they need help from us. So there's big opportunities you know, in that situation. And if you don't know an accountant directly, I'm sure your clients do if you say, 
Well, you, you should have because it should be in your fat finder. Yeah. It, should, it should be in your fat finder with all your details. So there, there, there's, there's, those, there's a little gold mine in there as well. Okay, cool. Guys, uh, guys can I just get like a 15 minute warning? We've got about 15 minutes left, so I'll open up for questions and, and stuff like that, if that's cool in the back. Uh, and if there's any uh, anyone on Facebook that hasn't asked a question and wants to, please uh, uh, ask that through, so, and we'll make sure we get to that later. Guys, I just want to flip it round, if I if I may. We've been think, we've been coming at this from the financial planner's point of view and from our angle with our hat on. Let's put the accountant's hat on for a minute. I'd love to ask. I'll, I'll just go to Ray uh, for this one. Um, what do you feel, or in your experience, what are, what are some of the drivers that? Uh, get the accounting firms or the ones who are doing it well to actually buy into this process. What do you think they're they're wanting out of, wanting out of the relationship? Now the easy easy answer to that is commission or money, right? Mm. But oftentimes I feel that it's more than that. So I'm not saying don't say money, but money's one of them. But I think there's more to it than that as well. So just in your experience, what do you find that the drivers are? Uh, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, is more especially the business owners. They're business owners, so the commercial thing is is certainly what drives the conversation. Yeah. Um, but you know, in the early days, we had these joint ventures where the business owners would love what we were doing, uh, but we weren't necessarily getting the traction underneath. Uh, and talking back to Brent's point earlier, frankly, it's it's spending the time with the people, sitting down with them, explaining to them that you know I'm not I'm not a financial planner that sits outside of your world. Like we are doing this, or we can do this together. Let's work together. Um, and you know, if, if if as an accountant you're interested in having a holistic view of your client, then let's. Let's do this. You know, I'm not. I'm not. You know, there's no risk here because we we are in this together. We're in this. We're in this journey. As and, and, and from your point of view, uh, Brent, is there like some sort of incentive for your uh, guys? And, or or the, or the same question. Is there? What's the main driver you find? Oh, she's a bit stick. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if they refer, they get to keep their job. Yeah. Is that's that right. right. Okay, cool. No. Look, okay. I've, I've said it a million times. We don't pay our we, we don't pay our, our accounts any any referral fee. Yeah. Um, but. We've got real clear, you know, what accounts want is referrals back, okay? So, you know, I mean, and it's difficult. It's difficult for financial planners to refer the ideal client back to an accountant because it's a business owner is the ideal client. But if you're out looking, you know, you're out talking to people and networking, you might not even got this, you know, you, you might have other people. All you need to do is, you know, refer and make an effort that you're referring to the client. So. Internally, um, when we could set up companies as trustee for the self-managed fund when we set up a self-managed fund, but the, the accountant gives us every self-managed fund to set up, we charge for that, do, a, do an SOA, but we always give them the company set up, you know, and we quote that into the job. If there's capital gains tax advice that we identify as needed, we then quote a fee in the advice, and then, so we're pretty much selling that for the accountant. We say, look, we've got this consulting job, you know, this client needs evaluation for this business succession plan, this buy sell agreement that we're putting together with the lawyer. Um, you know, we've got your evaluation fee. So I think if you can refer back the other way, plus the main thing is not not stuff it up. Like that's the relationship. relationship. Yes. You know, that's the main thing. Just do the right thing. Yeah. Do the right thing by the client. Go the extra yard. It's not all about what you make. Um, if you have to do a freebie or a pro bono or something to help them out, help them out. Like it's all relationship based. And you become a good bloke or a good yeah. person or a good woman, whatever. A great friend. A great, yeah. A confidant. Yeah, that's it. Exactly right. That's it. We don't have to, they're not always after the money. You know, in, in, in instances where you're trying to do a JV, yeah, they're, probably, yeah, they're, they're keen to build an asset. You know, that's different. Guys, so who, who in the room, just to, if I can get a quick show of hands, who in the room is looking to build strategic and alliances and profitable partnerships with a view to screwing up the relationship? Just raise your hand for me. Who's going to do that? Anyone? Right, no one's going to do that. So we've got that pretty much down pat. So we can all go out there with the confidence to say, hey, I, I, we, we've got a really good opportunity with mutual benefit. In fact, we've probably got a three-way win opportunity. I think there's someone that we're, we're really forgetting a lot about here, and that's the client. And the way I've always positioned it, it's, uh, when, I'm, when I'm talking to Strategic Alliance Partners, it's all about what, we're trying to build a three-way win. Uh, your, uh, your, sorry, you win because you are able to give a re referral or um, introduce someone to uh, with, with, a, with a, a solution to your problem. Your client wins because they get to see me and I'm going to fix their problem, but I also win because I get a new client into my business. So we're building a, what we call a three-way win. The accountant wins, the client wins, and if those two people win and everything's true in those two regards, then you get to win as well, and it's a three-way win. Yeah, and I think the other thing that we've shown the accountants that we can do is we, we, you know, we're, 
we're a little bit behind where Traster are over there with their business, but we're trying to automate a lot more. And you know, I don't know a lot about Adrian's business, but it sounds like he is as well. And I think if, as financial planners, if you can try and you know use technology to drive some of your back office, automate your business so that you can be fee competitive, because you know there's a lot of paperwork and admin and time, and if you can run a really efficient business and have you know, good, valuable advice at a reasonable cost. That's another thing that the the accountant's going to want to see. And yeah. you know, so invest in your businesses, invest in automation. You know, think about how you're managing money. Think about how you, you know, you're doing a record of advice every time you do an investment switch. If you are, you're crazy. You know, you need to be looking at managed accounts. You need to be looking at partnering up with with the proper you know providers in that respect and trying to automate advice generation and things like that. It's it's, it, there's a lot of time and effort, and there's no silver bullet out there, but yeah, if you can do that, I think they're the types of things that accountants want to see, that you are forward thinking, yeah. and you're investing in automation back office so you can spend more time servicing clients and providing better advice. Looking after their portfolios yeah. and their files. You don't even talk list. about product or commissions or kickbacks, you just talk about client Great. and awesome. how we can spend more time helping them. Guys, really, really good so far. Guys, you're getting value out of this so far. Is this helping? Helpful? Yeah. 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 Uh, guys, let's just take a quick pause. Um, I just want to open up the floor to any questions that you guys might have. If you, We're going to do a roving mic scenario, in. Yeah. yeah? So if there's any, anyone, got, so just raise your hand if you've got a question that you'd like to ask, or if there's any Facebook questions, we'll, we'll do those right now. Right. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mick here. Um, how would you deal with potential referral alliance partner? Um, or existing alliance partner that certainly has got the opportunity to refer internal. They don't want to, but they have to because of the system how the franchisee works. How do you keep it in the answer? How do you make sure they don't go outside? Um, look, it's it's difficult. Um, I mean, now it's a, well. So you're yeah, it's, you're talking from the opposite yeah, opposite side, but. Sure. Um, I, I guess, it, well, yeah, there's plenty of other alliances there, but if you've got someone who ultimately isn't comfortable referring in house, then um, yeah, I guess you've got to, it's, there, it's up to them to try and work out a way how they can do it, but they probably just need to be, encourage them to be upfront with with their their manager, their owners, their boss, and, and, and you know, as to why they're not comfortable. I, I don't know if there's any any magic solution to that? Um, I reckon there's two reasons why alliances don't refer. Number one, it's too hard, and number two, they don't know how. Right. So, on the flip side of that, so all we've got to do is teach them what to do and make it easy. If it's too hard, what you'll find is it'll. I reckon it'll be a losing battle all the time. You'll always be fighting, or they'll be timid, or whatever it is. So it's a bit of a hard. But if they're not allowed to do it. It's going to be pretty hard for them to all of a sudden be allowed to do it unless they have that conversation. But in, in, in saying that, though, we have allowed our, our accountants to refer externally on finance broking because we've had some disappointment in the brokers we've had internally. And I've just said to the brokers, I said, look, you, you, need, to do, you need to do better. Like, these guys are referring externally. Here's the examples of why and how. And, you know, in the end, that we've, some of them have had to move on and we've ended up you know, struggling in that field a bit uh, as much compared to the financial planning. But yeah, I guess it comes down to that business and there must be some serious problems in that business if they're not happy to refer internally. Yeah, great. Thanks for the question, awesome. Wait, anyone else who's got a question? Raise your hand. Any questions, guys? Or a couple of hands? Yeah, probably um, two questions. One is, so you've got a referral partner who refers Pretty well, but you're not going to win all those clients. Some are going to, some are just not going to go ahead. You always feel sort of guilty or let the referral partner down if they don't go ahead, but you, you don't know the reason why they haven't gone ahead. It just doesn't go ahead. So that's how you sort of overcome that. And second of all is how do you probably turn a referral partner into an equity partner, as you can go from a Referral arrangement to a JV arrangement. Sure. So with, with the JV thing, it's actually what we what we start with. In fact, um, so I, I don't I don't like the referral partner thing because it comes in drips and drabs, and you, know, you have to. I mean, it just doesn't work for us. So you literally it, it's it's literally an entity, um, and the clients go into it, and it can look and feel like the accounting firm, but it's got its own AFSL, and so it's it's, it's literally that. Does it have KPIs? It does. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's run like a business. Yep. It's run like a business. It's just that, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a joint 
equity model there. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's run like a, it's not, it's not trace code, it's not the accountant, it's it's, it's, its, it's own thing. Model, yeah. And it, yeah, it's got to keep, be kept honest with budgets and you know, I'm driving different places and yeah, it needs to, needs to produce otherwise, like any other business, it stops making sense. Yeah. Okay. And then <laughs> in terms of the way that um, we make sure we're delivering, because yeah, you're right, you don't want to be the guy that uh, run around the, 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 in front of the client pitching all these different fees and it's not going anywhere. Um, uh, so you probably win seven out of 10 or six out of 10 and there's three yeah. or four out of 10 yeah. that just don't go ahead for yeah. whatever reason. You always think, all right, how's the referral partner gonna feel about it? Sure, my, yeah. my answer to that is convert better. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, my answer to that is communicate. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that's really, that's been, that's been a, you know, a, probably a negative, well, one thing we've had to get better at is communicating back to the accountant to keep them up to date. Because the last thing they want is a call from that client who hasn't gone ahead to not find out from that client that they haven't gone ahead. Yeah. They should hear from you, hey look, had this meeting, went really well, we didn't charge them anything, they didn't go ahead for these reasons, you'll probably get a call or next time you see them, look, I really enjoyed it, thanks for the referral, hopefully I can help them again next time. But you've told him and or her and when they, to the client. Or you just don't know the reason and you look forward to hearing the feedback why they didn't go ahead, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I think Brent said before like you maybe don't be so short sighted. So not every client in my mind is, is an opportunity to, to you know pitch a proposal. It's it's firstly to learn about, you know, identifying what the financial planning need is. And quite frankly, I've been in meetings where it's just a lot of general advice and thank you very much to the accountant calls and say thanks. You know, I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. I'm not going anywhere, the JV's not going anywhere, and that might turn into They something. might refer their parents, you know. Exactly. You don't know. Yeah. So the the, yeah. the other side of that is uh, is educating the accountant <laughs> the referral. Because if you can get the if you can get a financial planning referral come from the accountant with the trusted with the trusted advisor position, if they can come to you pre prepared, pre positioned, and predisposed to working with you, that's going to go a long way to lifting that conversion and improving the, the, the rate. Yeah, I've just probably got one particular client at the moment who's been referred and done a proposal, and they're humming and ahhing, which means kind of leaning towards no rather than yes, yeah. if they're humming and ahhing. Yeah. Um, they're just saying, we'll get back to you, we'll make a decision by end of April, and I'm sort of thinking... Have yeah. they got a strong uh, relationship with the accountant? Or? Yeah, and I'm sort of thinking, you know, and normally we convert those referrals from the accountant, yeah. and it's just like, I don't want to go back and say, look, we, we may have lost this You're client. You're not going to get 100% conversion, right? Yeah. 87.4 yeah. is what you should be looking for, and um, that's fine. <laughs> have you been through the advice with the accountant? That's what I was going to say. Yes, correct. The, the, um, the accountant's got all the information and the, and the proposal and the, the file notes and the feedback, etc. Yeah. yeah. I, I would be sitting in the office with the accountant yeah. and say, let's call the client. Let's yeah, call him yeah. out. Hey, Fred, yeah. it's, X, it's Bill from XYZ Accounting here. I'm just sitting here with Justin and I'm just looking over your, your um, strategy that he's provided. I just want to run through, how's it, uh, is it, does it make sense? Have you got any questions? Let's, let's talk that through now. I don't think that's offensive. No, not at all. Well, not with at all. The, I was just going to add that later question that you had in terms of how do you take it to the next level. And it's sort of, what well, my suggestion there is to think about it a bit more corporatised. Yeah. So put, like, think about what a corporate does around their marketing, around there, and put that infrastructure around your proposition for an accounting firm. And all of a sudden, like, I've seen the transition. Like, I, I used to have really shitty conversations with accountants. And it was just like a conversation. I didn't have anything around it. It was just, and like, you can get that with a, with a relationship factor and that, that can get you that accountant. But to take it to that next level and maybe work with some different types of firms, potentially, yeah. you put that infrastructure around it and all of a sudden, like, we're talking to 10, $15 million accounting firms, revenue accounting firms. So, yeah, it, it changes the dynamic because they perceive you differently. So. Yeah, I've got just one accounting re referral partner and they are pretty good and it's just referrals and but it's is it just a name? Uh, an email address? No, a little bit better than that but yeah largely that. Imagine if you could get it way better than that. Yeah but it's every time it's a five figure kind of fee so it's it's good but every time you go to approach them and go well let's take the next level they just go oh, we're happy how it is kind of thing and it's just like. Let's, let's, uh, let's park that and take it on, offline with one of the guys after the event or whatever. Em, have we got any um, Facebook Live questions at all? Not a Facebook Live, but this one came via email. Oh, so cool. Eileen Nelson is in Adelaide. 
Um, and she she emailed to say, was this coming to Adelaide? And I said, it's not, it's going to be live, not but tonight, if you've got first. a question, let me know. Um, and so she said she's uh, she's basically starting out, um, bought into an FP franchise, um, and they're basically 100% sort of self-generating business at the moment. Um, any referrals come from their clients, and that's about it. So they, uh, she said they're great networkers, and they're great referrers, so they refer out to accountants, brokers, and things like that, but just aren't getting anything back. So she's just wondering what... Where did she start? How could she, you know, turn that around? What could she do? Like she's sort of, yeah, sending out these referrals, but not seeing to get to get them back. So, well, one thing I'd say is if she's referring a heap out, then she's probably got a license to, you know, go and ask if she can spend a bit more time in their practice educating their accountants and you know educating their people on the value of advice. I mean, you know, if if, if she's referring to them, then I'm sure they would. Want to keep her happy. Yeah, keep her happy and let her in the door. And look, the other thing, look, you know what, out of sight, out of mind sometimes as well. Like, if you're not in the office, in the in that practice, if you're trying to work a referral arrangement where you're not, where you're in a different office and the client comes in, you know how, how much better strike rate you have if you're there and they can go, hey, look, you've got this issue. You're in the office right now, Mr. Client. I've got Brent next door, I'm gonna go and grab him, just to, even if it's a handshake business card, hey, you going, look, yeah, we can probably help with that. They're there, they're, they're, they're keen, they're live at that stage. If you're, if it's all about email and, you know, here's, a, here's someone's card, ring them. The amount of clients I get are ringing up, Brent, I've, have you heard from this guy I've referred him to? No, I haven't. I've given him your card. Oh, right. he didn't ring. You don't, you don't hear called. from him. He never calls. But if, yeah, and the accounts are the same, but if you're not there, um, it, it, you don't get as good a strike rate. So one thing I'd say to the, her is that lady is maybe, you know, that accounting firm, have a look at whether she could end up taking some space in the office um, or, or getting, you know, looking for space nearby if it's working, if, if it's got potential to work, sit down with those owners and have a chat and, and say, look, how, how can this work both ways? Teach them how and make it easy for them. Yeah, she does have a licence to do it. Mm. All right, guys. Well, that's this, that's great, guys. Really good. Hopefully, that's been helpful, guys. I just want to ask one last question. This is a bit of a summary, uh, and, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. Um, but I just want to know, um, looking back in your experience with building these profitable partnerships, what would you say has been your number one lesson uh, of what you learnt in the process, and what would be your number one tip uh, when going out and building these good, strong, quality strategic alliance partners? We'll probably we'll go back the other way. So, if I start with you, mate, so what's been what's been your biggest learning, and what would be your biggest tip for the guys? Think a bit deeper about it. It's um, it's not just oh, I want to have a referral relationship. Just go make one. I like the yeah, a lot of our sort of engagement success has been through really thinking through what are their problems and like actually document it. And it's amazing. Like I know people look at marketing documents and like they're sort of surface material, but if you think about what critical thinking goes into putting something together like that and actually really caring about what's put together all of a sudden you've gone through a process of actually thinking about really what that client, in this case the accountant or other referral partners, what their problems are. Because when you go through a marketing process, you're like, how do I engage with this person? What are they gonna pick up on the page? And we did that really <coughs> deeply and it's, it's been really helpful. Like it's, it's, that's probably my biggest suggestion. If you think, if you think about what's, what's an accounting, accounting firm's biggest problem, think about it. They've got this attrition coming out one end and they want, they're trying to build their business. So if we can be that partner that's going to help them build their business by, yeah, by running workshops, running seminars, cross-referring, bringing new blood into the business and stuff like that, that's, that's one big way that we're going to all of a sudden become valuable to those alliance partners. Well, Steve, I'm happy to share. Um, if people want to just contact through the, the website, um, in Spark Partners or Spark Ecosystem, we're happy to share some of that marketing material. So it just gets you... Uh, awesome. Or the Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, Facebook group. Right, uh, biggest lesson and uh, biggest tip that you'd give the guys? Um, biggest lesson probably new relationships doesn't necessarily need to be new relationships. What I mean by that is, is kind of the next point, which is um, even if you don't know the accountants that, that you know, we'd ideally like to speak with, we've all got clients. Um, and even if you're starting out, you've got, I don't know, 20 clients. There's 20 accountants behind them. Um, and that's, that's something that we could all do, you know, frankly, tomorrow and, you know, have a look and see who they are, jump on the code and say, hey, we'll look after somebody that's mutual. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a low-hanging fruit. I think given the timing in the accounting industry, like, they're scared. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're getting commoditized. The, the 
uh, my gov is automating a lot of the tax return stuff. They're getting regulatory changes. I mean, they they're, they're waiting for a call like that. You know, frankly, is even if it's an email. Hey, well, John. Hey, John. It's Steve here from Blackman Profit. How are you? Just a quick touch base, mate. We've it's been a while. I uh, haven't I uh, haven't spoken to you for a while. Are you open to a coffee in the chat? I'd love to hear the latest. Do you want to catch up for coffee? It's so simple, so easy. There's no threat there. It's really, there's no, nothing threatening at all. And, you know, how can someone say no to saying, I can't like coffee with you? Really, really simple and easy. So, cool. Great work, mate. Awesome. Thank you. And what about you, Brent? Same question. Lesson and uh, tip. Um, the lesson's probably been, oh, yeah, I do a few things differently. Um, I think I think the communication, but see, one thing that accountants don't do great, they don't do really well is file notes, which we do really well, I think. I think. Financial planners, uh, plumbing that has been drummed into us, you know, uh, along the way. So, um, sharing those file notes, you know, earlier in the piece, I think would have been better, and just communicating. I think that that was one thing that we, you know, I found let us down when we had new planners. When I was dealing with the accountants as the advisor, it generally wasn't an issue. We're a small firm; we got bigger, multiple offices. So, I think the communication. And having a system that can automate that, where you know they, they can log on to your CRM and see the contact you've had, would be the you know the oh. utopia. Um, biggest tip uh, is don't oversell. Um, you know, just build a relationship and and do do the right thing by clients, by them, and, and don't yeah don't look at it as a hey, everything has to make money. You know, um, because it eventually will. You can build enough relationships. Like we haven't done any marketing for years, um, you know, which is, we now probably need to start it a bit more. We've got more planners and we're now getting through the database a lot more. But, you know, if you do the right thing, um, you become busy just, and they just want to keep referring to you because you, they trust you. If you try and oversell, you try too hard, it won't happen. You're that guy, aren't you? You're that guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and look, one thing I will say, just while I'm wrapping up, like, We've talked a lot about accountants, but one thing that you might think about also is, is, is family lawyers. Um, one in two and a half marriages end in divorce. I'm dealing with a lot of divorcees at the moment. Um, it's happening a lot, it's happening a lot more. Um, and what happens when, when people go to a divorce, would go to a family lawyer, is that they, they all, you know, generally they've got an accountant and a financial planner, but they're splitting up, so one of the partners needs another financial planner and or accountant. Right? So one in two and a half marriages, any divorce, and one out of those couple is gonna need a new advisor. And one thing with lawyers are, uh, are there any lawyers in the room? They're not real good with numbers. <laughs> and they'll admit that. They're not real good with numbers. Yeah, you know, they really, really struggle with numbers. Um, they do, and look, that's what we, and they really love dealing with, you know, uh, look, we don't have a lot that we've, it's one target market I'm going, I'm going to look at building some more alliances with. As an accounting financial planning firm, I always look at how we can build more alliances. We've got some good alliances with some real estate agents. Um, we're now going to look at some family lawyers uh, because, yeah, look, I, I don't really, I have enjoyed a lot of my dealings with some family lawyers because they, they uh, it's like they write two letters. One to the lawyer about their client, another one, Mate, let's keep this going for another six to 12 months. We <laughs> string this <laughs> yeah, out as long as you can. String it out as long as you can. But I think, yeah, it's an unfortunate stat in the in the uh, in our lives. Is there's a lot of marriage in it. Awesome. All right, great. Thank you so much, guys. I, I just hope that you guys got value out of that. There were some really, really good points uh, uh, given by the guys from three different angles of profitable partnerships as well. So, guys, let's put our hands together for three, four, eight. Unfold the picture. Um, this is uh, this. This is one of my favourite parts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I got And uh, please just uh, un unroll it and, and share. Share with the audience. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the jaw is pretty strong. They got um, the milk, right? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so come on guys, pull, pull Facebook live, have a look. 
<laughs> but thank you, thank oh, you all very much. Good. And uh, and Steve, it's Steve's birthday tomorrow. So a big round of applause for uh, Steve tomorrow. He's two, uh, two years old. You wouldn't believe it. Um, you wouldn't believe it. No, you wouldn't. I've, I've got a handful more uh, thank yous to IWF. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got Nathan and Mel up the back here, and we've got Edward uh, just here. So uh, please, uh, a round of applause for Ida Moret, massive supporters of the Flight Wiser. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Justin has been uh, very generous in his desire to build a mastermind here in Perth. Uh, it's not something that we spend a lot of time doing these days. We're, we're moving to a digital format next, uh, probably next, next half of the year. However, uh, Justin's put his hand up and said, look, if there's people that want to catch up in, in Perth, and we have these uh, in the other capital cities, so reach out to Justin. You can also, if you haven't already, go to uh, bit.ly forward slash XYMM for Mastermind. There's flies, yeah, there's a couple of flies. There, there's flies up the back. That should make it easy. Uh, I assume everyone here is in the Facebook group. If not, otherwise, XY and advisor. Be, yeah. Uh, and uh, the podcast as well, which we've had some great feedback tonight. We've been asked to double the amount, and Dave, I'm willing to do that. So, uh, look, thank you to Perth. Thank you guys for having us. And, uh, look, let's go get a beer. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.